All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Bart Bartoloni here on the show. Now, we've just done an amazing podcast. Go and check it out. Link under the video. Uh, he tells us about his full story, about how he went from a Top Gun pilot to a trader and investor. Uh, now, we're going to see some of the crazy stuff he does on a price chart, which I hadn't seen ever before. We're going to talk about <laughs> measured moves, which I did know, uh, these circles that I'd never seen on a price chart. So if you haven't seen them before, you got it. this is a treat for you. And then what can potentially happen with the dollar yen. So there's a, a big move shaping up here, which uh, Bart is gonna show us all about. So welcome to the show again. My pleasure, Cam, it's awesome. Cool, Somebody well let's share, share your screen and, and have a look at it. Yeah, man, let's do it. Hey folks, my sponsors, City Traders Imperium, have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you got to check out. You can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold as well as Forex, plus they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With CTI, it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50 to 70% profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. You know, one of the things we talked about in the podcast was learn the corrections, right? And so, you know, this chart, can you see that okay? Yeah. I, I blogged about this one, right? This is the, you know, same type of pattern. And so what we're looking for is, you know, high probability setups, right? And so the triangles are, are, are five waves. Uh, they occur in three, right? So here's your one, two, three, four, five. And then off you go, right? And so they're continuation moves. Um, they're a, they're labeled A, B, D, E. And honestly, you don't know you're in a triangle, so probably D, C. So, um, you've probably been chopped up multiple times and then you finally got one leg left and you go, ah, this must be a triangle. One minute chart or a monthly chart. So what I'm eyeing here is, um, the yen, US dollar yen, um, this the thesis, I always like to write that, is thesis is this is a big low. What I mean by that is a multi-decade five-wave move, okay? Um, and off we go, wham. Uh, you can see my blog, you can see the count and everything like, so this is either wave one uh, or A, right? And because um, we could be correcting, but either way, what does that mean? Well, uh, we've got, this is either going to be a B, right? A, B, C or two, but either way, I think the dollar yen is going to really take off. Um, so where are we? So here's a, you know, a representation of a triangle, A, B, C, D, E, right? One, two, three, four, five. Here's the labeling and off we go. Where do I think we are? I think we're like right here. Okay. So I'm labeled as D. What I'd like to see now, this doesn't have to go as deep, right? If it's very bullish, it might just do like a 382 and then explode. But ultimately, I think we're resolving a multi year. This high was 2015. So, a seven year triangle, this thing is going to explode. And so, I'm really hawking around this 08 level to try to get long. Uh, this was my drawdown right here, Cam. I'll put a circle around it. So, um, once I was draw down, I uh, see this triangle here, A, B, C, D, E gone. See that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. So this is where I got stopped out a bunch of times. And so I just walked away from the end, but now guess what? Now I'm looking, my wounds have been licked and I'll try it. But ultimately if we can get an E right around here, this thing is going to explode. And, um, it could be quite frankly, a move equal to or bigger than that. So I'm saying that the yen go to 145 versus the dollar, or the dollar goes to 145 versus yen. That's kind of insane. Yes. And, and is that what you're talking about in terms of a measured move, that one you've just moved there? Uh, that is correct. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So um, this is a measured move projection. Uh, boom. So that's, that's a potential target. Um, I love the Kiwi. Check this one out. This was beautiful, right? So here's a monthly. You see it? Yeah. Okay. Here's a monthly of the Kiwi. Okay. And, and this goes all of this. I'll just, so we can set your, 
So that's that uh, Bretton Woods right there, right? And so measured moves are powerful, right? And so if we take this move here, your eyes just get drawn to it, right? That's a very powerful corrective move. That's the same corrective move right there. Well, wow. look at that to exactly. the pip, to the absolute the pip. pip. Right, right. So when you have a measured move and then you you know throw the tracement grid up there, right? Things get really interesting. And then if you look here, oh my word. Okay, maybe twenty, thirty pips, but yeah, that's why I'm like, what do you learn? Learn measured moves. Look at this dollar index. I'm really hawking this too, Cam. These are all just measured moves, right? I've never so seen measured moves like that before when you're going sort of down, um, sort of legs down. I've, I've always sort of used it as as targets. So that's interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, they can be the same step, right? So I'm drawn to this. So this is back in the 90s, early 90s, right? And so again, this really helps you when you slow down like we're talking about, Cam, and step your timeline out, right? Um, the moves repeat over and over again, right? Human and ever changes. So here's a pretty big low, bam, off we go, right? So one would think that maybe that's exactly equal to it. Man, man. Right? Crazy, right? So once you set, then you can say, okay, well, if that move was the same, maybe the correction's the same. So maybe the correction is the same. Well, and and how do you how do you work out that that's the area that you need to implement this particular measured move in the future? Because it could be any any times. Like I mean, there's obviously all these sort of moves. How do you know, or how would somebody go? Well, I'm going to pick that one from there, but it's now going to relate to this one in the future. Or I'm going to use question. this one. Quite frankly, you don't know. All right. Um, but <laughs> um, there's also some. I'm not holding back, telling you. I'm trying to figure out how I how I say it. Don't confuse people. This footprint. Remember, we were talking about foot. Remember that we were yeah. talking about the market will leave a footprint. That's why measured yeah. moves work. Um, this footprint, you can figure out what's causing it. And then the same sort of environment, like uh, i.e. look up stairs, look up into the sky, right. um, can be present. Okay. So you can correlate. It's like a moon phase you know. type type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. In this case, it's Saturn and Jupiter. Right. Same place. Yeah. Right. Now the other thing too is when you're when you do corrective moves again, right. If you're a day trader, you might be looking to enter right here, right? Let's say here and, you know, crap, you go long and you get, wow, why did it get stopped out, right? Well, this is very clearly one, two, three, four, five. You see that? Yep. So that's very clearly A, right? Now I know there's another move down. I know there's got to be a C wave. Following me? So if I go down to a, a 60 minute, I'll never see it. But if I stay out my monthly and weekly, again, if you remember 2008, 2011, three years, three years. So now the other thing though, what's powerful is not only do we have the measured move, we also have this projection. Yeah. See how you build a case for entry? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just change the colors here. Is this helpful, Cam, for you guys? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, okay. uh, I mean, it opens opens people's minds up to, to different ways to look at the market and uh, ah. and also just how movements can be predicted uh, to the pip based on what's gone on in the past. Manage risk. Right. So, so as you can see here, look at that, the pattern, right? So now I'm like, I'm interested in this because, okay, so there's our thing, right? Mm. So now look at this. Well, <laughs> so it, so even if like, so I suppose if you were looking, um, if you're in, in, you a know, retail trader trying to work out like where's this move going to end, where do I get back in for a potential retracement, you'd, you'd probably want to line it up with a whole bunch of other things to give you yeah. some sort of more confidence and confluence 
at a level, right. but that's like a, a pretty solid like potential turning point that you could go, well, that's number one. I just need to add another three or four in there. And then you've got confidence for a, for a potential move in the opposite direction. And you could probably work out where that one's going to end based on the measured, measured move as well. Absolutely. Right. Correct. And that's why on weeklies and monthlies, these measured moves are so powerful. You could build your entire trading strategy around that. Now, do you and want so, to give us an example of the, um, uh, the the circles that you draw on the chart? That's that's intriguing intriguing to me. So we'll just we'll just do it here, right? So the the first thing is you have to define an impulse move, right? So we're just going to use this move right here. Okay. So this is the rock hitting the water. I've dropped the rock, depending on how high it is, how heavy it is. Maybe I throw the terminal velocity, right? You know. By the way, yeah. Larry Pesavento gave me this. It's my first silver trade ever. Oh, just really? Kidding. Oh, yeah. seriously? Yeah, I just, uh, so I just dropped silver it into coin, the water, it? right? It's a silver coin. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. 0.99999. Fine. So, um, so I've just done that, and bam. Okay. So now I get out these. And if you look at the JC and I, um, I think it was our last vlog, I was like, hey, for poor spiders. Don't leave home without it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to measure that arrow. That's what I'm doing right now, right? So I've measured that arrow, and uh, it's that long, okay? So right. now you see me drawing it. And, and uh, by the way, this is unrehearsed. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right. Yeah, yeah so you don't know where this is going to end up, if it's going to no, be. No, I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really don't. Uh, so... The first thing I'll do is, there we go, right? So, boom, off I go. And now, guess what? I'm, I've defined the initial impulse move. You see that? Uh, okay, so so how did you get the... All the... oh, right, so you've just... What what do the middle things do? <laughs> I'm confused. How the, how no, no, the... that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, how did yep, the middle thing sort of come into it? Was it was it just like the the actual size of the the angle that you needed, or yeah. so so here's the move, right? Yep. Okay, that's simply the radius of the circle. Right. Okay. So so I take right. Yeah. And I measure it. Okay. And now I need to know what that radius is going to be on the horizontal. Oh, okay. So you, okay, so to draw the circle. Right, gotcha. And that, yeah. and that was the vertical line. I'll put it up there again. All right. Oh, right. I've got you. Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was you your measure. Me doing to... it right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So now, if I took this right here, right, and I just did that, right, you can see that. Yeah. The full right. circle. So this, so this is just my radius. Yeah, okay. I got gotcha. you. Right. Okay, so you but, so by doing that, you've now picked the 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 potential point where it taps that circle again, and you've got your exit for a, a long move long. So right. what's fascinating is here's the top, right? Yep. And for me, yeah, it makes sense why we're bouncing around here. The other thing is the verticals are actually time. And look what happened. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's bang, it smashes up at the time. No, oh, that is that right? is very interesting. It's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. The other thing too is let's go back in time, right? Let's see what else has happened. Back in time. Damn. Right. So yeah. you know you have a good arc. Yeah. Wow. Um. See how we got a little bit of. Yep. Support here. Yeah. So what that would tell me is that there's a potential that I might have it here. Yeah, it arcs all the way down it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So now yeah. what I want to do is I want to go, okay, what what's causing this top? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is I knew this. If you go on my blog and look up dollar index, you'll see it, right? Um, it was perfect 1.618 price projection. So what I've done here, right? See that? Is I've simply defined this move in price. See that? Yeah. And now I'm projecting it. Sorry, there we go. Boom. Boom. I'll just move it over. Boop. Yeah. The precise 1.6 yeah. price projection. It's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. So 
what, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take this arc and can you see the, um, can you see all the numbers and everything here? Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, it's either a music frequency or a sacred geometry number. You'll learn those in the Michael Schneider, right? The numbers one through five, their square roots and the inverse of those square roots are the ratios that are responsible for all creation, not just Fibonacci, right? Um, and that comes from music. So the frequency of a string is equal to the square root of its tension or one over the square root's length. Square roots, inverses of the square roots, big deal. I'll leave it at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to randomly do it, but I always throw 1.618 out there, right? And so what I'm trying to do is I'm looking in the path. You see that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, bam, yeah. hit it. Yep. Yeah, you know, see how we found support? Yeah. Isn't it crazy? It and is. And then, yeah. because, you know, we've got that, well, I'm just going to go ahead and draw my circle up here and wham. Yeah. That's, uh, that is, that is crazy. Yeah. It is. And I admit <laughs> it. <laughs> Don't believe it. I, but I'm not, <laughs> honestly, I'm not. And this was I under no, here, which, no which is great to, for the guys watching. Hey, guys, ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use these guys, Hanko Trade. Look, it was a no-brainer for me because I was looking for a broker with really good trading conditions and one without any leverage restrictions. Look, also, by joining Hanko Trade, I was able to cut my cost of trading significantly with their super low commission of $1 per 100K. Look, if you want to find out more, check out hankotrade.com or there is a link in the description. Um, hey, look, but thank you very much for sharing this with us today. This is... Uh, some it's probably the most unique thing I've seen on this channel. I don't know, is that good or bad, Cam? <laughs> it, it's good. It's good. It's good. Right. It's it's really right. good. Um, I mean, I've, we actually know we have had uh, spe special dates that have been based on the moon and and that sort of thing. Um, but oh, yeah, this is works. yeah this this is this is a uh, fantastic. Now, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the uh, the guys to get hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can email me Bart at uh, bartcharts dot com. Um, hit me on my website, bartcharts.com. Just go to the contact page. Uh, like I told Cam in our earlier discussion, I'll try to get back as soon as I can. Always will get back, but uh, sometimes it might be a little delayed just uh, with you know everything going on. But um, Cam, I'm really thankful to, to meet you. I hope we do it again. Uh, anytime, man, let me know. And if anybody has questions, please have them reach out because uh, we're all in this together. You know what I mean? Awesome stuff. Well, look, guys, uh, we did do a full podcast before this as well. So if you do want to get Bart's full story, then uh, jump over there, link under the video. Um, and look, if you're looking to automate any of the things that you've seen on today's show, I'm sure you can automate the uh, the uh, the circles as well. I haven't tried it myself, but I'm sure you can do it. I have got my Robot Builders Club where I teach people how to uh, build fully or semi-automated trading robots for the MetaTrader 4 oh, and nice. 5 platform. Nice. So guys, um, thanks for watching. Do hit subscribe, hit like, and click on that notifications bell. Click all, and we'll see you in the next video.